So what does it truly take to be a profitable trader? Online, they make it seem so easy. They show you the random winning trades, the hindsight analysis, and they show you the lifestyle to make you think, yeah, trading is the easiest thing. But believe me, I've been doing this for almost a decade now. And I want to tell you what it truly took for me to go from a non-profitable trader and the trader just like you trying to figure it out to now eight years later, being a full-time trader, living in Dubai and actually living the real dream as opposed to what these marketers online want to show you. At the time of recording, I've completely six months of public signals giving every single one of my trades live ahead of time publicly for free and over the last six months I've been able to achieve over 60% profit averaging 10% per month to have a six month record of 60% gain to be able to pull that off has taken a lot of experience refinements and lessons so therefore I really want to share what it truly takes to be a profitable trader so that you can take the lessons without the trauma and the scars that I had to endure. And I want to focus on the correct frameworks of taking losses, how you should approach losses. And I want to break this up into two camps, one which is the beginner or newcomer into the market. And then the other camp is the professional trader. What kind of separations and what kind of different mental frameworks are between these two camps, between the amateur and the newcomer who's just starting out with only one or two years experience and the one that's truly a professional trader doing this for many years and making a living out of this. They have clear differences in their mindsets, in their approaches and overall mental frames. And therefore, if we can bridge that gap, that's where we can start to learn how we can really accelerate our growth and really find true profitability. So over the last six months and over 50 public signals that I've given, what I've noticed is on the losing trades that I've had, and I've had many, I have about a 60% win rate publicly. So on those 40% of trades that I've lost, I've noticed certain things amongst the newcomers in the comments section, those newer traders and the way that they approach the losses. Because the things that they say when they take a loss or they see me take a loss is to the effect of, hey Wakar, you didn't consider that POI. Hey Wakar, you didn't consider that imbalance. Hey Wakar, why did you buy in a bearish market? Did you overlook that? Or another one that's very common is, hey Wakar, great trade. It's a loss. That's part of the game. But at least we learned a lesson because a loss is not a loss if you learn a lesson from it. And to be honest, I get it because I used to think the same. When I took a loss, I thought, okay, I learned something. Or I would used to think, ah, oh, I took a loss because of this or that. And I used to blame it and say, that's the reasons I took the losses. But now when I've been doing this for much longer, I realized we can't think like that. We can't approach losses like that. The correct approach to losses is completely different because these kind of thoughts that you probably have too when you take a loss, it's very very common, it's very normal, and it's a very appropriate response, especially amongst newer traders. But a professional trader doesn't think like that. A professional trader doesn't have the same strategy or approach to the markets when they are even entering a trade. So when they take a loss, their approach and mental frameworks are also going to be different. You see, the difference is a professional trader, they have a predefined plan. They're not coming to the market and they're just saying, oh, I know about these smart money concepts and I know about this trend line and Fibonacci. And they just throw things into the market and it's a little bit different every day and they just hope it works out. They try and learn many things and they apply everything that they know. They have a scattered approach. One day they're trading gold. The next day they're trading Euro USD. One day they're trading London open. Next day they're trading London close or New York close. One day they're doing a swing trade. The other day they're doing a scalp. And this completely scattered approach screams lack of restriction and a lack of restriction is definitely conducive to non-profitability. A professional trader, they have a predefined plan. They have predefined trade models. They have predefined entry types and they have their exact checklist and requirements to enter in the market. And they've gone through all of the concepts and they've picked their best ones, they've tested it, and they've seen how they intertwine the synergies of each one of these confluences to find an optimal refined plan. And then they have the data for this. They know exactly this trade type is this much of a win rate. They know this entry type has this kind of a win rate. This predefined plan that has been tested has a different lens for the professional trader because they're not coming in and hoping for the best. Their frame is, I just need to follow my plan because I know it works. I've tested that it works. And as long as I can stick to my plan and therefore allow my psychology to perform, I just need to allow time to play out. I need probability to play out because every single trading plan is going to have its losses, every single one. So therefore, if that's unavoidable and I have a five losing streak, I need to know, is that five losing streak part of my plan or away from my plan? 
And if it's away from my plan, we address it. But if it's part of the plan to take those losses, then we just keep waiting and we allow time and probability to play out without modifying anything. Whereas the newcomer trader, they'll panic, they'll spiral, they'll go on tilt, they'll quickly deploy new concepts, new schools of thoughts and switch up their trading plan very quickly and go from one way to another to another and have a completely scattered approach. And they'll say that, ah, the reason I took a loss today is because I overlooked that supply zone. So next time they focus on that. And that becomes a confirmational bias. Or they think, oh, I learned my lesson from this loss. The lesson that I learned was don't buy on a certain market condition. So then the next time when they see that market condition, they do the opposite. Again, a confirmational bias. This is a small sample size of making a decision on a trading plan on the perspective of just a handful of trades. That is not correct sampling. A professional trader doesn't modify their plan, doesn't modify their strategy unless they have over a thousand trade sample size and they've tested and seen the data for it and seen the ripple and domino effect of changing something to see how one thing can truly manifest into a trading plan. As we know, the butterfly effect is one positive thing, one seemingly positive thing can really mesh into a system and have that real domino effect, that butterfly effect where one small change can break a whole system. And we have to remove the mindset of fighting losses because we know losses are part of the game. It's the only guarantee in the market that losses will come. But our approach and our behavior and our response to these losses is what makes the difference between a professional and an amateur. Because the professional, they enter the market knowing it's an educated guess. It's a calculated risk but there is always going to be reasons against your trade. Even if you have the best concepts, even if you have the best refinements, even if you have 10 out of 10 on your checklist, it might be the most highest probability trade for you, but it will still incur losses. And the reason for that is there is no such thing as the perfect 100% win rate trade. So therefore, when we are approaching the market, no matter how strong your plan is, you will always have a reason that your trade could be a loss. So what does a professional trader do? They have their checklist of reasons to enter the trade. But when they are about to enter that trade, they will also assess and be aware of reasons that trade could fail. That is known as doing the devil's advocate. Meaning to say, if I'm taking a sell position today and I'm seeing Asia high run of liquidity, time window, supply zone, pro market trend, lower time frame confirmations. I've got a very good checklist for reasons to enter the cell. But then I could also have the devil's advocate. And that is me saying, if the market is going to hit my stop loss, why will it hit my stop loss? And I start to look from that perspective and lens and say, this could be a loss because of momentum, because of this counter trend line, because of the volume in the market. And you can start to speculate and say, these are the reasons against my position. And then before you enter the trade, you have these two things side by side and you determine these reasons to enter the trade overpower the reasons against my trade. So I am aware of the risks. I'm aware of the reasons against my trade, but I'm taking an educated and calculated decision to still take the trade, utilizing risk management and knowing likelihood is based on my plan and data, that probability is on my side. And therefore, if the market goes on and hits stop loss, then I know the reasons for that loss. And that's another thing traders don't do. They don't realize when they take a loss, why they took a loss. They think, ah, sometimes it happens or that was a stop loss hunt, or you can't always be right. And that is escapism. That's a victim mentality. So you don't come to the market and blame. You just address, this is the reason I took the loss. I knew this from the beginning and I don't change anything. I don't go on tilt. I don't get confused. I don't spiral. I don't get angry. I say, this is part of the plan. This is factored in. This was an appropriate trade to take and the devil's advocate was correct today. However, the devil's advocate over a long-term horizon, over a larger sample size is not the profitable thing to do. If I have a 60% win rate, I know 40% of my trades will hit loss. And the reason 40% of my trades will hit loss is because of the devil's advocate. So when you come and take a loss in the market, you don't now think, oh, I need to change my strategy to these other reasons. No, you say, I'm going to allow time and probability for my data to play out. Because the way I see beginners take losses is from a position of incompetence, negligence, and they start to think, oh, it must be my fault. It was this reason. These are the reasons I took the loss. But a professional trader, they don't have the perspective of, I was ignorant. I was neglecting my analysis. I didn't do a full analysis. They're like, no, this was part of the plan. It was a calculated risk with reasons against it as there always will be. And it just so happens in this case, the reasons against me played out. And we know the best thing we can do as a trader, if you have a proven plan, if you have a proven edge, if you have data to support it, then the best thing you can do as a trader is allow time and probability to play out and yield the results that your data has shown. Now, the only things you should do as a professional trader when you take a loss is not say that was a stop loss hunt or that happens in the market, or maybe I need to learn something, or at least I learned a lesson. We don't do escapism. Professional traders will simply ask two questions. Number one, was this a valid loss? 
Did I follow my plan correctly? Did I follow my confluences correctly? Did I check each one of my checkboxes that I needed to for that trade model? If I adhered to my plan correctly and it's a loss, then it's a valid loss. Then we simply say, this is part of the plan. This happens. This is factored into my data and on to the next. However, if I see I deviated away from my plan, I entered too early, I entered without confirmation, I entered at the wrong time of day, then I know that the reason for this loss was my negligence, was my adherence to the plan. And that's something that should be corrected. So that's question number one. And then question number two is, was my performance correct? Was my psychology and emotions to the market correct? And that's something you look at at the end of the day. Once your emotions have settled down, once you're out of looking at the live market and you can look at it from a refreshed perspective, and then you make a judgment and see, did I enter this trade because of greed? because of fear, because of FOMO, because of hope, because of desire, because of the sake of wanting to be in the market. There is a whole host of emotions that we have as traders. But as traders, we are not robots. We cannot remove our emotion. And we know that these emotions can have an influence on our behavior and decision making. So then when we review our trades and we say this was a valid trade, this is part of my plan and I should have got in. Okay. Then I need to see, did I jump in correctly or did I jump in with emotion? Did I over leverage? Did I jump in too early or too late? Did I chase and FOMO the trade? And these are the only questions you need to ask yourself as a professional trader. Nothing else. Did I take a valid trade? Was it a valid loss? And did I adhere to things correctly from a perspective of performance and psychology? If the answer to these two questions is, yes, I followed my plan and yes, this loss is factored in and yes, it was correct psychology, then the only thing you do as a professional trader is, well, everything is fine. I don't need to make any changes. On to the next. And you quickly dismiss that position. You don't hold the burden of that loss and carry it into the next trade because then you're more likely to not adhere to your plan and make an emotional decision. And so long as we follow our risk management and follow the data of our plan, probability will let us yield the results that we've already tested in our predefined plan. Whereas the newcomer, it's actually normal to learn a lot. And therefore the newcomer in the market should be thinking, okay, I took a loss. Let me now learn something new. Why did I take this loss? Because there's a difference. A professional trader is performing to a plan, a predefined data-driven plan. Whereas a newcomer is finding an edge, finding a plan, finding their profitability. So when you're in that curation phase in the market, well, that's when you need to actually be very quick to learn. So a newcomer in the market, they should actually learn and test and continually refine their plan and actually pivot very quickly. If you have a sample size of 10 or 20 trades and it's not adhering to what you would expect, in that 10 or 20 trade sample size, you should look to pivot and test something new and find new data for that. But as a professional trader with a predefined plan, 10 or 20 trades is not enough to make a new change or make a new behavioral approach to the market. As a professional trader, no decision should be made under 100 trades sample size. And as long as you're following your plan and your emotions and performance are correct, 100 trades is the minimum threshold before you make any changes. So now that we know the two categories between an amateur trader and a professional trader and how they both differently view losses and depending on where you are in your journey, are you in a curation stage where you're building and finding an edge or have you already found an edge? Have you already got data to prove it? And based on where you are is exactly how you would deal and approach losses. And I think that's where a mentor comes in. If you don't have a strategy, if you don't have a predefined plan, if you don't know exactly what you're doing, you're just learning concepts and hope it works. That's where you need somebody to hold your hand and not just teach you concepts. I'm not talking about a course. We have enough information. There's enough information online. You don't really need courses. You need someone that has truly the experience, truly the lessons, truly the refinements and actual wisdom, market experience, market IQ. And you want to find them so that they can hold your hand and steer the ship and show you exactly where you're going wrong and tweak your system custom to your situation. That's true consulting, true mentorship, and that's something you should seek. And therefore, from this whole video, apart from the mental frameworks, you can see the differences between a professional and a newcomer in the industry. One thing that is paramount that you will definitely notice is they have completely different attitudes, different approaches to the market, but everything boils down to one main thing, and that is a restricted trader is a profitable trader.